Hello everybody, welcome. Um, I just wanted to show you the results of the um, the mouse firing. <laughs> Should we call it the mouse firing? <laughs> For those of you who have, well maybe I should explain. For those who haven't, are not up to date, the, the kiln here had a, a, a mouse nest built in it and I couldn't fire it properly as a result. As you can see down down here now I've I've put these kind of clay tiles across the where the burners go to stop that happening again. Of course everything is clean now inside because all that horrible carbon that we saw has all been is all burnt burnt up. Anyway I just wanted to show you this is the results of the firing here. Um, the pots that are on the left hand side of my hand, those were the few that were already bisque fired uh, in the firing. They came out very nicely. Um, little jam pot there. Uh, nice, nice celadon. I like the quality of that celadon. That's, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Uh, fluted biscuit barrel. Um, this is like a hackamy, rather a rather a thick layer of of hackamy under a transparent glaze. The firing, I'll be honest with you, the firing uh, with all the hiccups that I had and cleaning it all out and putting it all back and and then firing it. Uh, the cone. Let's have a look at the cone. Uh, where is it? It's up here. Yeah. So that was. That's 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 the cone. That's cone ten. So that's well over, isn't it? And yet the, the certainly the kiln, let's say, was not overfired, and in some instances, perhaps, was a little underfired, and it was also a little oxidised. Didn't quite have that reduction up to quite where I wanted it to. But that being said. Um, on the right side of my hand, all of these pots here were all once fired raw glazed. So let's just quickly go through them. Uh, you know, that plate. Now that plate actually, the foot is just a bit na a bit a bit narrow on the bottom there, borderline. Um, this one is actually is actually better. Hakimi with transparent glaze over the Hakimi, which seems to work fine um, whether it's bisque or not. I think you might have seen me do these, or if not, I photographed them and put them up on my, on my Facebook page. Um, I'm actually trying to migrate away from Facebook slightly. Um, uh, going on to a new site called steemit.com, s t w e m i t dot com, and your posts and your comments, you can get paid in cryptocurrency. So, yeah, those were the those two there that you see, wood ash sprayed over, a um, thinnish glaze to the inside. Uh, working with this. Uh, doing things this way around, you know, cutting out the bisque firing. I think it's a little tea bowl there, quite nice. I'll just quickly show you these. If there's any anybody who's interested in any of these pots, just write to me. And uh, now that was, you see there, the bluey. That was, um, unfortunately, the flower that I did there didn't really come out quite well. The, the hackamy was a bit not uh, not strong enough. It might have been though the fact that it was slightly very slightly reduced, I think. But the cobalt, the blue there. This was a glaze that was a slightly experimental. That was actually uh, wood ash and red clay. But I did add a little a little felspar, I think, into that just to because it was rather a dry glaze before. So, but again, once fired. This was a little celadon 
piece again raw glazed with just an iron oxide decoration over nice little tea bowl that one I think uh, paddle with a sushi paddle once five with the um, wood ash sprayed over quite nice this one here field glaze that's from my my cornfield out there um, cornfield uh, yeah cornfield glaze and wood ash sprayed over see the wood ash on top of the iron bearing glaze gives that rather nice chun effect it's a, a chun type so that's something to you have to look at the pots you see and, and um, there's a little uh, bottle that is um, uh, squashed thrown cylindrical and then with Hakami and then iron oxide over with a transparent glaze work quite well yeah again same same idea except this time um, this is all done with a paddle you see slightly oxidized there now these four here they were my usual clay body but I needed in uh, while I was weighing up etc some some extra sand so you can see a little bit more toothy the body uh, but I quite like it actually quite like it I should be doing more of that and again this is um, cornfield glaze with wood ash and with wood ash and uh, felspar yes that's right wood ash and felspar this one um, basically just the underglaze decoration there uh, with the sort of flower motif and the cobalt that kind of works quite nicely that one came out actually quite nice uh, a little bit more reduced that one okay again this is uh, cornfield glaze with with wood ash and um, felspar that's nicely reduced that one and this one here again same glaze um, quite nice quite pleased with that okay moving on these guys here those were some I already had them done in Shino and I don't know if you can see not very not really properly melted something's happened to my Shino glaze and not being a bit of a, bit of a not being very much a glaze buff as it were I got a feeling I may have read somewhere that it can go off after a period of time Shino glaze I'm not sure uh, tankard this is the Hakami with the clear glaze and the over over decoration with the with the iron oxide quite nice quite like that quite nice uh, this one uh, this was an experiment this is, I did not like Celadon with wax resist here here and there and all around and then with my cornfield glaze over the top it just did not do it did it at least it didn't for me maybe it does for you <laughs> let me know <laughs> yeah I just take these out in the light a bit you don't really sometimes appreciate these things until you you take them out into the light do you so there you go there's the thin glaze with a hack of me on a tankard so da -de -da -de. these would be 28 bucks these that's just straightforward quite simple quite nice I quite I don't mind that at all Celadon with an iron oxide rim and wood ash just sprayed over can't be that can you ah this one was one that I did with a menorah on and this is uh, that what I did with shellac the, the um, menorah I should be doing some more of those um, so that, that worked quite nicely yeah all these ones here pretty much the same I was another Oh, I didn't know I had a second one. There's two menorahs. Okay, good. Um, quite satisfactory, eh? In fact, this kiln I don't think has any seconds. Doesn't have any seconds. That's always good, isn't it? At least I don't think it does. That's yeah. That is Hakami and and, um, 
and inoxide deck and wood ash sprayed over. That doesn't have the thin glaze and it has that field glaze combination. Dee 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 dee. That one is the same except this one has some little stamp. I made a little I made a little stamp and impressed that in, you see, which you can do. Da dee dee dee. Well, there we go. These ones, uh, these one, uh, this one was one, yeah, this was one I did with some flowers and the cobalt came out rather black instead of blue. It comes out blue under the, like this one for example, pretty much the same isn't it, except this one is, see the difference how that's come out blue, the cobalt there. Um, a little bit heavy perhaps in the iron here, the iron oxide on the handle and on along the rim. It's a little a little on the heavy side, but yeah, we could get to like that one I guess. That was one of those one oh, that one had had Shino on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. I added a blue line on this case on this case to and a bit of and a bit of um iron on the rim. Because I wasn't liking the the Shino as it was behaving. These are here a group of these are basically the, the same um, a little bit on the oxidized side perhaps but not not really bad um, this is the thing isn't it you you see you look at uh, you when you put pots into a kiln you have sort of pre you have sort of uh, certain expectation, don't you? How you think, they, how you want them to come out. If they come out different, oh man, it can, it can throw you, can't it? <laughs> well, we have to learn to be a little bit, uh, perhaps a little less rigid in our, in our thinking and be a little bit more philosophical and, you know, just take a step back. Maybe come back and look at a pot a few days later. These guys here, with the cellar glaze over the rim, and uh, that doesn't have the thin glaze on, that's just wood ash sprayed. They're actually quite satisfactory. Yeah. Okay, so that's those. Those are 28. These are some, just a few bigger pots. This one featured in one of the videos. Um, that I did. Uh, that was a paddled pot and um, raw glaze, celadon to the inside, iron oxide over the rim. Um, yeah, quite interesting. Another guy here. This was one that did feature in the video that I did and I was doing the Hakami and then I did an iron oxide decoration over the top. And um, yeah, yeah, quite. I quite like. I quite like that. I quite like that. I could get to like that one. This guy. This guy. Ooh, hang on a minute. I've got to I'll just grip him in my hand. Um, let's see. Yeah, that had the hackamy, but that one had. Uh, I put some iron o oxide, a weak coat of iron oxide. Uh, before I did a hackamy on it, just to get a little bit more contrast going on. So there's that guy. Dee, 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 dee. This is, uh, well I guess you'd call them fish, wouldn't you? Well that's what I turned them into. Sometimes when you do a pot, you, you know, you, um, I did them as just as brush strokes to start with, to be honest. And then I and I thought, oh yeah, that it's like fish, kind of going over a waterfall. The hackamy is sort of like the, the waterfall, isn't it? Do you see that? Yeah, I was quite pleased with that. So, and one final one. This guy. Um, yeah, quite pleased with that. Quite pleased with the form. And I always like to try and get the form right first. And then I, you know, you, you try and do a decoration that is going to work with the form. The Hakami and then doing the iron oxide decoration over that. Um, 
Yeah. Yes, quite nice. Quite pleased with that. So, there we have it, folks. That's the result of that raw firing. And I didn't show you this, actually, that on this plate. I don't know if this is... I'm looking at it, and I'm not sure. Let me just show you this in a bit of detail. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's got like little raised... Looks like little raised... Bumps there. I'm wondering if that's because it wasn't quite on top. A bit of wind there. Yeah, but that was basically... Uh, I think the design worked on that. That was, that was basically an iron oxide slip applied directly to the finished plate, the raw, the raw plate, and then let to get to go dry. And then Hackamy, these Hackamy crisscross done over the top, you see. And then when that was sort of dried off, then a clear glaze over. I got a feeling that is because it's not quite properly kind of melting. I can't see any other reason it could be. And this one is exactly the same, but this one is melted perfectly. So there you have it. Yeah, I think someone will probably like this one, won't they? That's that one I paddled. With Joey Wade's paddle. Call out there as a shout out to Joey Wade. <laughs> and his classroom of kids. Yeah. Good for him. We have to give these people who educate others a shout, don't we? Okay, folks. Let's put the camera back on a tripod. Wow, it's a hot day here in Pennsylvania. It must be 90 degrees today and it's only May... May the, I don't know, 16th or 17th. So, thank you for watching, taking the time to tune in. And that's just a brief overview of some of the pots that came out of this kiln. And uh, if there's any, any pots there that take your fancy, just, just write to me, contact me. Uh, you can write to me at simonleachpottery at gmail.com. Um, apart from that, we have workshops here that are ongoing. We've got a workshop this weekend, actually. And uh, so we've got um, five people coming. And then in June, I think June is just about full. We may have a couple of spaces actually in June. July is almost full, I think we have one space. Then in August and September and October, we do have some space. So if you fancy coming in on a workshop, please get in touch, uh, write to me, and I'll tell you if that's a possibility, if there's availability. And um, yeah, if you need any pottery tools or um, leech treadle wheels on my website simonleechpottery.com Hey, as always keep practicing and I will see you soon I hope this video has inspired you to try out some raw glazing for yourself and yeah let's all learn together bye for now